Thank you, Phyllis. Good morning, Unity of Bloomington. Welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm Mary Ellen May. I'll be your service leader today. Thanks for being here in person, and thanks to all of you joining us online, wherever, whenever you are. We feel your presence. We're grateful for you. Thank you so much for being here today. You are welcome. So our service will be a little different today, <laughs> again, <laughs> as we continue to evaluate our minister candidates. We will have a shortened service, followed by an interview with today's candidate, the Reverend Catherine Bro. For now, let's sing together, either standing or sitting, but singing, let your voices come out. We're going to sing Awaken to Your Power all together. <laughs>
may be seated. We're going to dive right in, and I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce today the Reverend Catherine Bro. Reverend Catherine has been a student of New Thought since 1984. The past 40 years for her have been a process of spiritual study, personal introspection, and creating a life she loves. Ordained as a minister with International Metaphysical Ministries, Catherine achieved her master's in metaphysical science and completed certification as a master facilitator with feminine power and evolving wisdom. Recently, she received a coaching certification with Mag Magnetic Mind at Conscious Education and is also certified as a conscious recovery coach with TJ Woodward. Catherine's passion is to continue to go deeper and explore more areas of divinity that traditional congregations shy away from and then share her experience, knowledge, and skills with like-minded explorers. Catherine and Larry, her life partner of 35 years, currently live in London, Ontario, Canada with their precious fur babies. So please join me in welcoming the Reverend Catherine Bro. Good morning, Unity of Bloomington. Oh my gosh, it's just an honor and a privilege to be here with you this morning and to even be considered to be a candidate as your new spiritual leader. I would like to give a quick shout out to each member of the search committee. And uh, I just, I'm just so supported and so welcomed by them and I'm sure I will be by all of you as well. So today I have designed a, a message for us. I, uh, as I was introduced, I, I like to sort of stay outside of the box with some topics. So my topic for today, and, and my reason for doing that is I like to simplify these things and make them very digestible. So my topic for today is everyday mystics. And followed by a question, how will I know if I'm a mystic? So for me, mysticism simply means experiential knowledge of spiritual things, as opposed to book knowledge or knowledge. They were some like parting of the seas. We just want to tap into, or at least recognize, everyday mysticism. So let's look for it in our ordinariness and even in our woundedness. Before we will dive in, I would like to address any possible discomfort uh, with the word mysticism, with the intention of alleviating any misconceptions or false beliefs that are tethered to that word. Uh, many have held on to a belief that mysticism is associated with the occult or magic and that has resulted in a reluctance to being open to understanding more about it. So if that's familiar to you, I just invite you to be curious and to allow me to walk you through some new possibilities. In my research about mysticism and the definition of mystic, my favorite quote is from a professor and Roman Catholic theologian, Bernard McGinn, who said, that a mystical person is someone who is committed to the search for a deeper contact with God. Hmm. A mystic, by his definition, is one who has achieved that in a conscious way. Now then, Father Richard Rohr, the Episcopal priest, author of Universal Christ, and founder of the Center for Action and Contemplation in New Mexico, he says that a mystic simply means one who has moved from mere belief systems or belonging systems to actual inner experience. He goes on to say that all spiritual traditions at their mature levels agree that such a movement is possible, desirable, and even available to everyone. Allow me to repeat that, if you will. A mystic simply means one who has moved from mere belief systems or belonging systems to actual inner experience. And that all spiritual traditions at their mature levels 
agree that such a movement is possible, desirable, and available to everyone. Now, I just have to say, Unity of Bloomington, you've expressed a desire and belief in possibility so beautifully in your website video, Unity is the Path. It speaks directly to the maturity of your congregation and our desires to experience a deeper connection with God or Source. Now, in the New Testament movement, we study the life and the practices of Jesus. And Jesus was definitely an everyday mystic. The most amazing thing about Jesus to me is that he never strived to be revered. He just walked his talk. He just walked his truth. His authentic identity was love. He didn't just speak love. He was love in action. Now, Jesus was not a people pleaser. He never seemed to worry about what other people thought what they thought of him or how they would react, even when he knew they'd be judgmental. Jesus never thought of himself as better than or less than anyone else. You know, this might be surprising to you to learn that Jesus was not universally loved. Even in his hometown of Nazareth, in his hometown, he was known as the son of Mary and a carpenter, and the general consensus was, who does he think he is? <laughs> it's reported that Jesus told his disciples, prophets are not without honor, except in their own hometown, among their own kin, and in their own house. Sound familiar? <laughs> As the disciples prepared to go out on their own, he cautioned them not to be upset if they were rejected. His advice was, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, just shake off the dust from your feet as you leave, as you leave that house or that town. Today, I think we would call that not taking it personally. Jesus never suggested they could please all the people all the time. And isn't he a remarkable example of my opening statement about mysticism? that it's experiential knowledge of spiritual things, as opposed to book knowledge, secondhand knowledge, or even church knowledge. If we look at nothing more than Jesus' final days and his demonstrations of his faith and trust in God, we hear of him letting go of ego, worry, fear, and even the need to be seen as being right. He let go of defending himself and most dramatically not lashing out at his disciples who had betrayed him. Mm -hmm. Jesus remained in this state of letting go throughout his trial, throughout the, the march to Calvary and the crucifixion. And don't we marvel at his equanimity, his serenity, having found that peace that surpasses all understanding. Well, he had tapped into a vast inner reservoir of spiritual strength. So can we. What we see in Jesus is the result of steady, continuous deepening of his spiritual understanding, knowing his own divine essence. Jesus put in the spiritual work and it served him at a time when others might have wanted to run or at least resist. And then he promised we could do anything he could do and even more. He never wanted to be seen as the exception. He simply wanted to be the example of infinite possibility for all. Everyday mystics are people who commune with the presence of God. They receive guidance and they commit themselves to living in a state of infinite possibility, rather than living solely for themselves or in constant reaction to circumstances. Their vision for life is much larger, more expansive, knowing that they're alive for a reason, a purpose that will benefit all human spirits, even those they may never meet. 
One of the most remarkable mystics of our time was Myrtle Fillmore. Myrtle is my girl. You can use Myrtle's guidance and experiences to light the path for you. It won't take long to learn that it doesn't come from wanting it. It comes from actively creating it. That's right. It doesn't come from wanting it. It comes from actively creating it. Imagine being told you have something that the medical profession declares is incurable and fatal. And never mind that it was over 100 years ago. Can you imagine your first response to, is to go home, deny what you've been told by the experts, and choosing to rest in the silence and to go within and ask spirit for guidance? Can you just feel the power in that action? Yes, she affirmed over and over and over again, my body does not inherit illness. My body does not inherit illness. My body does not inherit illness. And then she spent hours in affirmative prayer of gratitude for each organ in her body, visualizing each and every organ as whole and functioning to full capacity, and then thanking it she did not allow herself to focus on the diagnosis in any way. She trusted infinite possibility, just as Jesus had demonstrated. Myrtle created the result of steady, continuous deepening of her spiritual understanding and experienced her own divine essence. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, this is an awe-inspiring story, but you may be thinking, how do I do this in this day and age with all the chaos and the unrest in the world, with all this political and economic upheaval that we're experiencing today? Well, let me ask you a question right now that helps you to deepen your spiritual understanding and hopefully experience your own divine essence. Ask yourself, what's one thing I can always do? No matter what emotions or circumstances I'm experiencing, no matter where I am, no matter who I'm with, what's that one thing? That's right. We can always go within. We can go to that sacred place within. It can be as simple as consciously breathing into our heart space. It can be as simple as a silent chant. My true essence is peace. My true essence is love. I am safe and protected. I am the light. So I invite you right now, let's practice this together. Close your eyes, if you're comfortable doing so. Take a nice, deep breath and allow it to go as deep into your body as you can. Exhale comfortably and just continue to breathe comfortably. And as you do, allow my words to be your words. My true essence is peace. My true essence is love. I am safe and protected. I am the light. Just take a moment to notice what you're experiencing, not what your mind was telling you, but what you experienced in that very brief exercise. You may want to journal about that later, but for now, let us come back to this place. I'm demonstrating mysticism as a natural part of everyday life, just a deep understanding of the sacred through enlightening practice and a willingness to allow the manifestations of these practices 
to lead the way. Father Richard Rohr, I just love him, he describes how gazing brings him in touch with God in all things. And he's been speaking recently of transitioning to a form of prayer that he calls gazing. Gazing without judgment, gazing without analysis, gazing without a critique. And he talks about taking his dog Opie for a walk and they're just sitting on the park bench and he and his dog both just gazing for an hour or more. He embraces gazing as a form of prayer that lets things that you and I probably think have no right to incite awe or to leave us awestruck. He looked at the cracked asphalts and he asked from his heart, why is it there? I don't know why, but it's mere being there made me love it, made me appreciate it, made me thank it. Sound familiar? Then he did the same thing with three dumpsters. I mean, with graffiti. He even gazed at the raggedy fence line and been torn. And he said he looked at it until it was at least a little bit beautiful. He said it was just beautiful because I let it be beautiful. He wasn't looking for answers. He was just a ruminating mind, gazing, and the more he gazed without judgment or analysis or critique, the more beautiful everything became. He says through gazing, he realized it was all more than enough. And it always was more than enough. Hmm. <clears throat> So the interesting and maybe a little bit disappointing news about being a mystic is there are no awards or special commendations for being an everyday mystic. Some may not even notice because the rewards are all within you. For you to recognize and experience in your daily life. Experience as greater peace, greater joy, greater love, compassion, just to name a few of the manifestations. So there's a story in the Bible, John 21, 3, that even after the crucifixion, the apostles simply return to their ordinary old jobs of fishing. They don't join the priesthood. They don't try to get a job at the temple. They don't go on more retreats or take vows or get special titles, and there's no mention of them baptizing each other or wearing special clothing beyond their everyday work garb. Metaphysically speaking, their attempts to continue to unconsciously fish from the left side of the boat like they always had created lack and limitation, and then spirit guided them to start fishing from the other side of the boat, which produced multitudes of fish. It appeared they could all go back to fishing now more consciously and more humbly. The mystical heart just knows there's a fellow fisherman nearby who is all, oh, he stands and beckons from the shore at the edges of every ordinary life, every unreligious moment, every secular occupation. True mysticism just allows us to fish from a different side of the boat and with different expectations. So, how will I know if I'm a mystic? Well, I received the answer to that question a few years back when I had the sincere privilege of working with Reverend T.J. Woodward as a mentor. And for those of you who don't know T.J., he is the Reverend that Reverend Michael Beckwith invited to open the first satellite Agape Church in San Francisco. T.J. Woodward is also the author of three amazing books, uh, Conscious Creation, Being Conscious, and Conscious Recovery. 
And I chose TJ as a mentor because I wanted what he had. One day, after an amazing conversation, I felt comfortable enough to say to, to him, TJ, I think I'm a mystic. If my heart was just pounding. And he just smiled that amazing smile of his and his eyes twinkled and he said, Catherine, of course you're a mystic. We all are. It's just some of us are still awakening to it. And we both laughed and cried at the same time. So there's your answer to this question. In all its simplicity, in all its power, of course you're a mystic. We all are. We are all mystics. Mysticism is a natural part of everyday life. It's just a deep understanding of the sacred through enlightening practice and a willingness to allow the manifestations of these practices to lead the way. I pray that you will take time each day to consciously go within to experience a deeper connection with Source, with God, and to allow yourself to trust the manifestations of more peace, more joy, more love, more abundance. Hitting to the enlightening practice will open the gates to everyday mysticism for you. Namaste. we live in, isn't it? World of love and technology. <laughs> okay, as we just come together and relax in our chairs and allow our chairs to just hold us, our feet planted on the floor if possible, as we breathe comfortably and allow our shoulders to relax. Ah, and we're reminded of the beautiful lyrics of I release and I let go. As we practice that right this moment, I release and I let go. I let spirit run my life. I am only here for God. I breathe into that sacred heart space of divine love, and I say thank you, sweet spirit, as I connect with my true essence of divine love. I radiate love to the world. 
I welcome the preparation of my higher consciousness through meditation, affirmative prayer, contemplation, and loving introspection. I move into my Christ consciousness with ease and grace. I take time each day to consciously go within, to experience a deeper connection with Source and allow myself to trust the manifestations of more peace, more joy, more love, more abundance. And I commit to this enlightening practice and allow the gates of everyday mysticism to open for me. I am the light. I am love in action. Let us rest in the silence for a few moments as we embody this higher truth. Thank you, sweet spirit, for this beautiful opportunity to release and let go. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. From within, I let my heart begin to see eternity. We're going to move into our interview process now. So if the search team would like to come up to the front here, and Leanne will explain how this is going to go. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Leanne. How are you? I am super duper. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your, the message that you uh, allowed us to, to hear this morning. It was, it was very heartfelt. Thank you so much. Um, I want to welcome you to this interview. Um, to the best of your ability, just relax, you know? <laughs> How's that? I give you permission to relax. 
<laughs> oh, then now I can. <laughs> That's right, you can. Um, we just want to get to know you uh, through our questions, and and um, we all love you already. So just relax, okay? Um, I want to reintroduce uh, our search team. Um, uh, I'm Leanne Kelly, uh, uh, Davda, and Mary Ellen, <laughs> and Tana, and Phyllis. And we are super excited to meet you again face to face. It's been a while since we had our meet and greet. Um, <clears throat> let me explain the interview process. We thought it would be <clears throat> easier just for one question, for one person to pose the questions. Um, so I will do that. I will be posing the questions to you. The format itself is that we have three questions that we will ask you, and then at least one more, depending on um, some of your answers. Uh, and I will decide which, of our other, which other question we will ask you. And then at the end, we will absolutely ask you uh, for any questions that you have of us. And then it opens up to the whole search team. And believe me, I'll pass this mic on when I can't answer the questions. So that's kind of how we do. Um, if you wouldn't mind, would you open us up in um, a prayer for this part of the process? Oh, I'd be honored to. Yes, thank you. So for those who are comfortable, we'll close our eyes. As we come together in prayer, we collectively breathe into our heart space. Every breath draws us into a deeper awareness of the vast sanctuary of inner power. As we come together today in the spirit of curiosity and wonder, we remember the discerning power of divine wisdom in my inner resource. I never need worry about making decisions when I attune to divine wisdom. I pray affirming my capacity to notice and heed whispers of truth. My faith quickens my perception of circumstances, allowing me to focus on the truth and then gives me the courage to speak the truth. The transforming power of commitment to faith is my practice in prayer and throughout each day. The Spirit of God is everywhere as source of the abundant life that I graciously receive. We close this time of prayer with an intention of radiating blessings of light and love as we serve ourselves, we serve each other, serve the community, and serve the world. And so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, question number one. And we have slotted about 30 minutes for the interview, give or take, you know, so depending on your, your answers. And so we'll start out here. Question one. Spiritual leadership is like putting a puzzle together you would be responsible for meeting the spiritual needs of the community, like providing Sunday message, one-on-one -on -one counseling, teaching classes, administrative tasks, and working with volunteer leaders. And that's just a list of few. Please tell us what would be your approach to organizing these responsibilities. Wow. Um... I love your analogy of painting this as a puzzle. I love that. And so what that makes me think of first off is, you know, how do I build a puzzle as one piece at a time, right? And where do I start? I start with the border or the framework. So I really am thinking that the way I would organize this, the first piece of the puzzle would be to really focus on meaningful Sunday messages that do kind of disrupt the comfortable, you know? Um, we're here to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. <laughs> I love that saying. <laughs> and um, so that I 
just right off the cuff would be my first priority, my first piece of the puzzle. And my second piece of the puzzle would be to meet with the board of directors. Uh, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of where you're, you've come from and where you want to go. But the board of the directors are your trusted servants that you know I can really ask the questions to and really um, get to know them and then you know hopefully move fluidly forward. Um, my next would be to meet with admin because we all know admin knows everything that's going on. <laughs> uh, they are the heartbeat that keeps everything going. Um, and I understand you have a part-time admin, so you know what roles can I fill without stepping on any toes? And you know what is the admin doing, and what do they m most love to do? Uh, next piece of the puzzle, I guess, would be you mentioned classes and workshops. I absolutely love doing classes and workshops. Uh, I've been doing it um, nonstop for many years now. Uh, I do. Uh, I have done classes every week, and I've done workshops as needed, as requested. And I would sort of keep it that way. I believe I want to get to know people and find out what it is, where it is they want to deepen their spirituality, and you know, focus the workshops in that manner on a, you know, things that we deal with every day, like how do I deal better with money, with perception, with, you know, day-to-day -day things. Um, oh, one-on-one. I've been a one-on-one -on -one coach for many years, and that is probably the light and first love of my life. So, uh, let's see, let's, oh, and volunteers. Well, <laughs> I have a long history of volunteerism, so I have a real heart for volunteers and for appreciating each and every volunteer for what they do. And, and, and I would like to, you know, maybe that, that piece of the puzzle for me would be to just meet them, step back, ask what they're doing, sort of feel it, feel their way, and then um, go from there, go from there. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about you the experiences and the workshops and like you what you said is you know meet us where we're at what do we need but give us a few examples of what's on your heart as far as a work some workshops and some teachings. Yeah, uh, sure. I'd be happy to expand on that. You know what I what I believe is right now we are in an epidemic of loneliness and fear. And so my workshops would probably most likely be geared toward uh, liberating ourselves from, you know, the, the narratives and the doctrines that we're, we're being inundated with right now. For instance, uh, helping people with their spirituality and money, helping people with spirituality and relationships, helping people with spirituality and their, their church family or their community. Um, I also uh, am very good at doing workshops about addiction and um, uh, the effects of, you know, well, I, want to, I don't want to use words that uh, I'm not a doctor, but let's just leave it at addiction. I'm, uh, I have a huge heart for people with addiction and families, and I also would do workshops on uh, relationships. Thank you. Um, I just want to sneak this one in here. To, uh, ask, tell us a little bit about how you, well, I don't want to say how you feel, uh, about activism. Um, what, what do you think it is? How important would it be in your role? This is just blowing my mind that you just said this, Leanne, because I woke up three times last night and the first thing on my mind this morning was I must tell them I am not a political activist. I'm a love activist. I said to my husband this morning, I said, 
I have been told repeatedly all night that I must tell them I am not a political activist. And he said, why would you say that? I said, I don't know. Aren't you <laughs> glad I'm asking me... these questions? Oof. Well, if you believe as I believe, there are no accidents. <laughs> okay. well, I believe a... in oneness. I believe in, you know, what, you know, God is love, our race is human, and my faith is oneness. All right. Thank you That's so much. That's my activism. Yeah. All right. Question number two. Sunday service is wonderful, but connecting with Christ consciousness is an activity that needs to be practiced more than just on Sundays. How do you recommend that we motivate and support folks to practice connecting with Christ consciousness beyond the Sunday service? <laughs> well, that's probably going to be my favorite question of yours today. And I think maybe I hinted at this in my talk this morning. Uh, that is what I'm all about. I'm, I'm about guiding people into structuring a daily practice. For instance, uh, my thesis for my master's, the title of my thesis was Transcending Ego-Based Consciousness with daily practice of meditation and prayer. And so I didn't really know how to do that for many, many years. I heard people talking about meditation. I heard ta people talking about praying. And I did it in the best way I knew how. You know how we most do learn most things is you just pick up tidbits here and there. And then I started studying meditation. I started studying affirmative prayer and practicing it. And then I committed to a daily practice of that. So what I do now is I teach people how to do what I have done because of the incredible results that I have manifested or received. And so, boy, this is a, this is a great question. And it happens through workshops like we've already talked about. It happens through, you know, the, the uh, global mission for unity worldwide is a world powerfully transformed through shared spiritual awakening. So it's doing the work or the, the play, whatever you choose to call it, it's doing the spiritual growth and then sharing it with people, not being shy about it, not withholding it. Um, so yeah, I really, really encourage people to not just be a Sunday visitor but to be a committed spiritual, to own their spiritual program. Thank you. Um, do you feel there's a specific way then to teach that meditation that you're talking about? I believe in teaching by example. There's teaching, you know, and being an inspiration. So. I think the most important thing we can do is, is come together as the people that, you know, as, as the group that, that is committed to this, radiating that love. And I don't believe in the law of attraction, by the way, because I believe that denotes separation. <laughs> we won't go there too deep, but I believe in the law of radiance. So I think people are hungry for this. People are hungry for acknowledgement, for love for appreciation, for recognition, and I believe that that is how we encourage people to come together and to start doing what we do. I hope that answers your questions, because this really is what I'm all about. Thank you, uh, thank you. Um, we have a, and we've talked about this in our meet and greet, but we have a powerful, powerful volunteer leadership in our community here in Bloomington. Yes, you do. Uh, uh, yes, we do. Um, how, would, how do you see yourself working with this in your ministry? You touched on that uh, a piece in the number one, because we talked about the volunteerism, but can you expand on that a little bit? Yes, and, and I would like to reiterate your volunteer teams are absolutely phenomenal. You'd be the envy of most churches in the U.S. and Canada that I know of. Absolutely. 
and you know, like initially, I want to get to know you all. I, I want to I want to know how you're serving now, and and maybe what you would like to do in the future. Uh, just sit down with you, invite conversations. It should be really open about your wins and your challenges and and maybe your desires, you know, of how to serve in a different way in the future. Uh, what I know for sure is volunteers are the lifeblood of a community, not the minister. The volunteers are the lifeblood of the community. And the way I know that is I've been a volunteer at every church I've ever been a member of. I've done everything from lay flooring, clean bathrooms, clean the kitchen, to uh, sitting on the search committee three times when we were without a minister. And I have to tell you, it's a lot more fun being on your side than it is being on <laughs> Oh, it's a lot easier. Um, and you know, I've, I've learned to do workshops. I've studied, uh, you know, I love to do workshops on Myrtle Fillmore too. She's my girl. That's one thing I forgot to mention. Um, and even ended up speaking, and, and it's, it's just been phenomenal. But what I understand is the power of volunteerism. And, you know, something that I believe I really excel in, too, is, is I'm a terrific delegator in that I've learned how to be very clear with delegation. And then, you know, like taking the, the baby bird out of the nest and let her fly. Let her, let her or him go and do what it is they, they've been assigned to do and, and find out how they think they should do this. So to be there and be supportive, but to allow them to shine. Question number four. What experience have you had with, this, with spiritual paths outside of unity and how has that shaped who you are today. Okay, spiritual paths outside of unity. Well, I'd have to go back to the beginning in childhood. I was raised in a very small town in Canada, in Ontario, and uh, we were members of the First Baptist Church. And I think I probably had my first spiritual awakening around the age of six when we were forced to go to, to church with my parents because the Sunday school was closed for some reason. And we're sitting there listening to the minister and he was going on and on and spitting and sputtering and saying all these things. And I tugged on my mom's sleeve and I said, Mom, that just cannot be true what he's saying. If Jesus loves all the little children, this just can't be true. <laughs> and I got my first lesson in conditioning and, and uh, social etiquette. And she turned to me and said, shut up and listen. <laughs> and from that point on, I decided I needed something different. So when I was old enough, I did leave that church and, and went to a more non-denominational church. But I, um, you know, I was without uh, spiritual guidance for quite a few years. And uh, then I moved to Vancouver, British Columbia, where everything was available it was absolutely incredible and i was introduced to you know self-development and to new thought through louise hay dr wayne dyer um shakti gawain you know creative visualization and so all of these things really started to expand for me and i i just felt it felt right and you know, I would, I would find magazines of religious science and, and science of mind, and oh, they were fascinating to me. This is before internet, and <laughs> where we still read books and <laughs> magazines. And, and, you know, then I found uh, Unity. I was living in Bellevue, Washington. I found Unity of Bellevue was my first visit. And since 1984, I've been a consistent constant member of a unity church and I have I'm always very very open to other faiths and you know we say in unity we believe in all religions we honor all religions I should say and that you know this one mountain many paths that's really my thinking that's really my belief system and that we're we're all here for the same thing and that it's all based on love so 
You know, I've studied Course in Miracles. In the beginning, I couldn't even fathom it. I couldn't digest it at all, but I stayed with it intermittently. And then came along uh, A Course of Love, which is the follow-on to A Course in Miracles. I really, really love uh, learning that, studying that, and then facilitating classes in that. And then I kind of grew into The Way of Mastery, if you're familiar with that. It's a five-book series, books channeled directly from Jesus. The, the uh, Jeshua letters, the way of the heart, the way of transformation, the way of knowing, and the way of the servant. Absolutely fabulous series, and I have facilitated that for several years now. So uh, I hope that answers your question. I'm always curious, always asking questions, and always looking for deeper, more growth. Anything else from the committee? Okay. Is there anything else that you would like us to know or to say about yourself? You've said a lot, but there probably is a lot more. Oh, well, I want you to know that I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm way more of a face-to-face -face person. I would way prefer to, to be doing this one-on-one -on -one or nose-to-nose, -nose, as I call it. Uh, I guess what I, I made a couple of notes of things that I would like you to know about me is uh, I have learned to listen when God speaks. And I felt like God was speaking directly to me when, the, uh, when I received the email to make application for the position at Unity of Bloomington. And I feel that it's, you know, it's opened a door for me to, to walk in the direction of my vision to serve in a grander way. Mine has been rather small, um, not limited, but small, smaller scale. Um, I've been an entrepreneur since I was 17 years old, so I am not traditional and I do not fit in a box. I need to let you know that right up front. And one of my notes here was, I added this morning, I am not a political ad activist. Uh, and I align 100% with God is love, our race is human, and our faith is oneness. I absolutely love people. I'm a very strong advocate for the underdog. And I'm always open to doing things differently. I think one of the main things I really wanted to leave you with today is that I come as a package deal. Uh, my husband, Larry, my uh, husband will be celebrating 32 years of marriage on May the 9th. And he's been a member of Unity since 98 because I would kept coming home from my Unity Center and, and he would say, what the heck makes you come home for a, in such a good mood from a church? <laughs> And then one Sunday he said, I was thinking I might go with you. And that was back in 1998, and he hasn't stopped since. He's a tireless servant. He's been on many boards of directors. Uh, he's a techie. He's admin. As a matter of fact, when we were without a minister a year later, our admin, full-time admin gal, decided to retire. And Larry stepped up and was the admin for two years for our church volunteered. He has extensive technical support experience and extensive construction and design. Uh, he has a, he's a retired military officer, followed by uh, real estate development and uh, building. And he's 100% supportive of my application to be your new spiritual leader, with full knowledge of what that takes. So, <laughs> I think that's really all I want to say about that. I want to bridge that a little bit. Are you, you live in Canada. Yes. And so why Bloomington? Why Bloomington? I mean, we all love it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but uh, you tell us, tell us why Bloomington? Well, I would just say, why not Bloomington? Yeah. <laughs> we've lived in three countries. Uh, as a military, we've lived all over, everywhere. And um, we are always open for a new adventure. 
And would Bloomington have been on my list? No. <laughs> no. Uh, were we thinking warm? Yes, we were thinking a lot warmer than Bloomington. And, you know, being from our hometown is London, Ontario, but we haven't really lived here that much. Um, we are dual citizens, U.S. and Canada. And um, it's not so much about, you know, what we've always said, as long as we're together and on track, it, won't, it doesn't matter where we live. Right. That's not our key important factor. Our key important factor is, is living in alignment with what we truly want to do. We both live to create a life we love. So we don't limit that by a little bit of snow or you know, a little bit of this or a little bit of that. You have a gorgeous huge lake there. That's really important to me. You have hills, you have <laughs> restaurants. I'm a foodie. Um, uh, yeah, so why not Bloomington? Right. And Bloomington does have a lot to offer. We, we love it. it. We all love it here. So. And I love the size of the city. Good. Okay. Um, any, first let me say this, for all the times that you said you're nervous, you're really good speaking into, it looks like you're really talking to us. <laughs> so you're good at that. Zoom. I am. You are. <laughs> you're good at that. Okay, now it's time. Do you have questions for us? Well, I only just have a couple questions because, you, you know, the search committee, you, each one of you, you've been so thorough and so responsive to all of my questions, and, and I'm so grateful for that. Just a couple of things. Um, you have a prayer team. Um, is that a chaplain-trained team or...? Not so, currently, no. Um, that's actually something that's on our plan for uh, the summer is to try to start some chaplain training. We haven't had an active chaplain program for a number of years, but we want one and it's in our plans. Um, we just haven't started that yet. So that beautiful. would be- Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. But that's something okay. we want. Beautiful, that's something I would love to bring. And do you currently have any LUTs? No, that's an interesting okay. question, though, because I'm starting that training next month. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> but no, we do not have any current ones. And we have some, um, Luke, um, what's his last name? Yeah. Salmon, I couldn't think of his last name. Luke Salmon has already started some of the SEE classes as well. So we have at least a couple of people who have, have had a couple classes, but we do not have anyone who's credentialed as an LUT at the moment. Okay, all right, well, we've got some. Great things to grow. All right, and my last question for you is about the uh, daycare. I understand it's a private daycare. It's not a unity daycare. Is that correct? Correct, yes, in our basement. And can that daycare be used after hours to, for us to uh, either lease or use for uh, creating a youth program? Probably. <laughs> that would be something, they, yeah. I'm hearing yes from the people who. who I'm deal hearing with it that, too, Phyllis. So. Yeah, because I do have some ideas of, of how to get some children back. And that's every church's dream right now is to bring the children back. Right, so, exactly. Yeah, that, it's good to know that that would be a potential open door to. to have okay, some space I'm going to gonna give the microphone to our board director. She has more information about that. Our board president, rather. <laughs> Hi, oh, Joni. Hi. <laughs> um, the, we have children downstairs right now today, so we're offering childcare uh, on Sunday. We've committed to that in the future, so we have two childcare providers downstairs. Whether there's no children here or six children here, we're providing childcare. So we're using our, it, the nursery school rents our facility, so it is our facility, and they rent it, okay. and so. Um, we have the capacity to grow, and we have use of part of that basement space anytime we ask for it. Perfect. And there's a full kitchen down there. So we, we definitely have room to grow, and they have been wonderful partners with us and cooperate with us in every way. Fantastic. And you just gave me another tidbit that you have a full kitchen as well? Yes. Yay. I told you I'm a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> I also wanted to add about the daycare that 
they are very aligned with our values, even though they aren't a unity quote unquote daycare. They, they do um, a kind of meditation with the kids when to, to kind of calm them down. They use breathing, you know, blowing out a candle wow. or inflating a balloon. And they have a lot of uh, positive psychology based behavior modification things for the kids. So. Fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. No okay, I'm going to pass. It, I'm going to pass you on to Phyllis. She's going to talk about next steps. Okay. 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 First of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, for being who you are and for sharing that with us. So thank you, Catherine. Um, we're going to release you here in just a couple of minutes and let you breathe and, and collapse or whatever you want to do. To, I'm going to go walk the dogs. Okay, good. <laughs> um, we're going to have a, a couple of minutes to get a bite to eat, stretch our legs, and then we will have a discussion as to whether or not this congregation wants to bring you to Bloomington and we would pay your travel expenses to have the one-on-one -on -one that you were talking about. Um, so that we would ask you to do a full su Sunday service, teach a workshop or a class of you know, whatever topic you would like to give to us, and do a meet and greet with us, look at the city a little bit, so it would be a weekend. Um, you're welcome to bring Larry if you want to. I would assume you would want to do that, <laughs> but you're welcome either way. Um, but um, So the, our meeting today will be about whether we want to invite you to do that next step and come. So within a week, um, we will put this interview on our password protected website so that people who were not here today will be able to see the service, see, your, see this interview, and they will be able to answer the same survey questions that we're going to discuss here today. We'll give them one week to answer that, and that's in a password protected area of our website. So yeah. nobody else will have access to that. Uh, at the end of that, web, so by next Saturday, we'll have all the information that they have given us uh, for people who've not been here. And next Monday, we will send out um, a, a letter to you in snail mail as to whether or not we are inviting you back to come to the next step, which would be to come here in person. So you will know by a week from tomorrow, one way or the other. Did you mean snail mail or email? Snail mail, real mail, a real letter. Okay, that could take a while to get to the wilds of Canada. <laughs> okay, do you want me to do the email too? We'll do the I email really too. I would really appreciate it. <laughs> um, Save the postage, just email me. No, that's right. If that's agreeable with everyone. I'm um, to say that last comment, I was talking to Dave, I didn't hear that last comment, I'm it's sorry. Just saying, if that's agreeable with everyone, because yeah. it takes forever to get mail here. Okay, well, we want you to have a letter one way or the other, too, something physical. So I will Great. email at the same time, but we'll put the letter in the mail as well. So, thank you. Um, so that's what the way the next steps are. So, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, and we will release you uh, at this point and have our meeting. Breath and let it out with a sigh. Ah, give your body a little shake. You're sitting in a chair. Shake your body. You can shake your voice. Ah. We're going to wrap up now and move into gratitude as we prepare for our offering. I'm so grateful that you're all here and participating in this. Thank you so much. It's so vital to have you here as we make these choices. So we now prepare to show our gratitude for what we continue to receive. There are several ways to contribute to Unity of Bloomington. Checks or cash are always welcome, or you can use the text to donate button on the screen or donate button on the website. As the offering bags are passed, please bless the bags and their contents, whether you're giving electronically or whether you're giving today. If you're new to us, please fill out the blue visitor form in the front pocket of the chair in front of you with your first impressions. Prayer request forms are also available in the pocket both of these forms may be dropped into the offering bag as it is passed. So greeters, there you are. <laughs>
like to invite all of you to join me in our abundance affirmation speaking together. I am an abundant being in an abundant universe. I am not dependent on people or situations for my good. God is the source of my supply. I always have something to give, and I consistently give it. I expect the best, I give my best, and I now attract the best in every experience. Stand here in my power, I am fully realized. I am free of limitations, I am wholly undivine. With energy and talent, I manifest my dreams. All my cells are in alignment, I'm as God created me. I am. Greeters, thank you. Please join me in speaking our offering blessing. Divine, Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Thank you so much, everyone. We have just a few announcements. There is a tub in the lobby marked MCUM Food Drive for your non-perishable donations for the Monroe County United Ministries Food Drive. This will be going on all month, so you have until April 30th to bring in food. We but that's particip- only one more week. So I just bring to it say in. That. <laughs> Thanks, Phyllis. Please be generous. QR codes. We're now using QR codes for several things. You'll find them in your bulletin, right in here, in the newsletter, and at various places around the building. Please use them to sign up for being a welcome greeter. And if you have any trouble with QR codes, let me know. I'm glad to help you. Um, You can donate through PayPal or access the new new to Unity portion of our website on all these little QR codes. Our upcoming speakers. Next week, Sunday, April 28th, we will have our final minister candidate, Reverend Ruth Miller. And uh, I also want to just mention the member hub. Please remember that all of these interviews and messages are on the member hub, so you can access them. You can also access the feedback form. If you haven't left feedback for someone, please do so. It's all in the member hub. Um, May 5th, we've got Randy Craw, our very own, and also May 11th, Dan Pekarski. We're looking forward to those. And just want to give one final announcement. Our beloved Lynn Thompson broke her leg. So (laughs) if you could send love and prayers to Lynn and Chuck uh, for her healing, that would be very welcome. So um, just wanna give a little bit of an explanation for what we're doing next, if you can stick around. After the service, Joni's going to facilitate a community discussion. It's a lot of fun. Uh, she wants, we want to hear about all of your impressions of our candidate, Catherine Bro. You'll have an opportunity to answer some questions and Joni will lead us in a discussion based on the results of the questionnaire. We'll be able to see all the results on the screen. Um, So we'll have a 15-minute break right after the service to go to the restroom, talk to some friends, get some yummy food, and bring the food back to your chairs. If you have children downstairs, please bring them food as well. And then join us back here in 15 minutes to do the questionnaire and to have a discussion about the Reverend Catherine Bro. We want to hear your experiences. And if you're not able to stay, please do fill out that feedback form on the member hub. So... With all of that, please join me in our prayer for protection, and we'll wrap up. 
The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Let's gather together for our peace song, and then we'll grab some food. Scrunch up today. Please be back in your seats by 10 after 12. 